Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today for Peer Review in Review, What's Coming in OJS. I'm Kate Shuttleworth with the Public Knowledge Project. And I'd like to begin by sharing that PKP is a core facility at Simon Fraser University. And we respectfully acknowledge the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Keitsi, Coquitlam, Kikite, Kwantlam, Semiamu, and Tawasan peoples on whose unceded territories SFU's three campuses reside. Um, a few quick details about um, how our, our session will work today before we go ahead and get started. Um, you'll notice that your video and your microphone are switched off, um, but you do have access to our chat and our Q&A um, that will be open throughout the webinar. So please go ahead and use those at any time um, to engage with us, ask questions. We will save questions um, for the end of the presentation and our presenters will be happy to, um, to address those then. Um, we do also have captioning enabled in Zoom, so please go ahead and use that if that's helpful for you. Um, our webinar is being recorded and we will distribute the recording um, in the coming days. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our speakers today. So with us, we have Eric Hansen, who's a systems developer with PKP, and Devika Gold, who is PKP's user experience and user interface designer. Um, we're happy and excited to have them with us today to talk about some conversations around open peer review and some developments in OJS that might impact the peer review process um, going forward. So with that, I will turn it over to our speakers. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, so like Kate mentioned, this session is going to be recorded. Um, and I'll just walk you through the outline. So today I will walk you through um, uh, the enhanced peer review tools for editors in OJS 3.5. And then I'll pass the bait in to Eric, um, who will walk us through the future of open peer review. Before I get started, a brief introduction about myself. I'm Devika, and I've worked for over two years with PKP as a UI UX designer. I focus on enhancing all of the software's experience, accessibility, sustainability, and inclusivity through a design and user research, user experience and interface design, usability testing, and sometimes strategic analysis. Um, so let's get started. Um, the Easy reviewer statuses on the dashboard are going to provide journal managers and editors with a quick overview of each reviewer's progress in the peer review process. This feature allows editors to see whether reviewers are being accepted, completed, or missed deadlines, enabling timely actions like sending reminders or assigning additional reviewers to avoid delays. Uh, so by streamlining this information, the journal can maintain the momentum in the review process, resulting in faster decisions and smoother workflow. So I'll walk you through um, a demo of OJS 3.5. So as you can see here, this is our revised dashboard. And on the revised dashboard, in the review section, you're going to see these bubbles. Each bubble stand for a reviewer. So when you click on the bubble, you can see whether a review is ongoing, um, or you could see whether the request was declined or the request was canceled. Uh, you can also see review completed on with an option to like view recommendation. You can view unrecommend uh, the unread recommendation. You can see if the request was overdue or if the review itself was overdue. And you can also see um, the tracking update on like if the on the request that was sent, and also when you have confirmed the review as an editor. You can also see much more sophisticated information about um, you know revisions submitted by the author or revisions requested from the author, or if a recommending editor is being assigned to. Um, you know, advise the next step on the submission or when the editorial recommendation has been received and a decision is required or when all reviews are in a decision is required. So this is just going to help you stay informed about your submissions. Going forward, we also have an enhanced reviewer table for clearer workflow tracking. Uh, which would provide editors, journal managers, and recommending editors with an organized view of reviewer information in a streamlined format. 
it offers a clear breakdown of clear of each reviewer status. So whether they are assigned, accepted, whether it's completed or needing reminders, along with key details like any deadlines or comments that that might be. So this clarity will also enable the editorial team to quickly assess peer review progress. So again, from the dashboard, um, if I was to click on view, I can see the workflow page very easily. And on the workflow page right now in the reviewer section, you can see each reviewer, um, the status of each reviewer in a clearer way. You can see the review type and you can also take like quick actions from here. Initially in OJS, there was a drop down triangle which preceded, but we have replaced that with a more options menu, which when you click the focus on would be on this, which would allow you to take any additional actions related to the review. You can also see a tag of competing interests um, next to any reviewer um, in your review status as well over here. Moving forward, um, there's going to be a new reviewer dashboard as well, which will streamline the review process by providing an actionable step-by-step -step interface for reviewers. Um, this organized layout will allow reviewers to easily access their tasks, such as reading submissions, providing feedback, and submitting reviews. So I will quickly walk you through that as well. So... This is the new dashboard for reviewers. As you can see, they can see the ID, they can see the submissions, and they can see the activity, which would basically get them to like either accept, which would basically state that, okay, you can accept or decline this request, or you can, or your deadline for responding to this request has passed, please accept or decline this request, or whether the review is in progress and the deadline is on a specific date. So it's gonna, it, it's very actionable. And on clicking respond to request, there's a streamlined stepper, which we have changed the interface for. Um, and you can access all the information. Uh, you can click on accept for the next step, which is gonna take you through guidelines. Then when you continue to the next step, um, it's just the UI of this has been changed to be a bit more user-friendly. Um, and once you are done with the recommendation, you can submit for review and you're going to get access to review discussions. Um, so yeah, that's on the new reviewer dashboard. Um, next, we have a new user invitation process. So this new user invitation process will empower users like authors and reviewers to input their own data and verify their ORCID enhancing accuracy and user autonomy. This revi uh, revision also aligns with like GDPR regulations, ensuring data protection and privacy by placing the responsibility on individuals to manage their information more effectively. Currently, this change has been done on the settings, users, and roles. And slowly, we're going to uh, move this to all the reviewer assignment uh, workflow that we have inside the workflow of a submission. So I will quickly walk you through uh, the new user in um invitation process. So as you can see for users and roles and settings, um, this is how the table would look. You could also invite a reviewer in the journal. So once I click on invite to a role, um, you can search for an email address, username or ORCID just to verify whether the person is already a user or not. So say I type in a username and I click on search user. It tells me that the user does not have a role in this journal and that we can invite them to take up a role in OJS. So I can put in their email address, the ORCID ID, the given name and family name is something I as an editor can input, uh, but the author can or the reviewer can go ahead and change this information. You can put um, their roles, you can continue to save and you'll have your new email interface where you can send like an email. And once you invite user, you're gonna get like a pop-up and the user is gonna get an email. 
Um, and on the email, we'll detail all the information and next steps. And once they continue to accept invitation to a new role, the first step would be to create a connect to ORCID or they can skip ORCID verification. Um, so let's say I create and connect an ORCID, I'll be redirected to ORCID where I can authorize access. And um, then the email address with which I accepted the invitation would come. I can put in my username, password. I can click on um, privacy statement. I can go next, put in my user details. So all the editor mentioned details will be here already. It's up to me that if I want to change it or if I think it's correct as a user, I will let that be. I will also put in my affiliation, my country of affiliation, save and continue. And I can also see a review of all the information I have put in and accept and continue to OGS. So this is how the new user invitation will look. And we're gonna, we're working to extend this to the reviewer invitation process from the workflow where an additional step of um, adding in review deadlines and files and due dates would also be there, but it's gonna be very similar to this process. Um, moving on, um, now reviewers can easily access their previous round recommendations as well. So this proposed improvement will enable reviewers to access their previous review reports by clicking a button on the top of the review process page. And this will streamline the review process and enhance the quality of feedback by allowing reviewers to refer back to their earlier insights. Moving on, there's also an ability for editors to send review reminders prior to due dates uh, rather than after it has passed. So this notification will increase the likelihood of receiving reviews on time. Uh, so you can set these settings from um, the settings in OJS as well. And you can also download review forms. So based on the requests from editors, an option to export completed review forms has been implemented which would allow editorial teams to access them outside of OGS in different formats uh, so that they can attach these to forms, uh, or, um, to emails or print them or present them at committee or board meetings. So that's it from me about all the new updates around peer review that are gonna happen from on OGS 3.5. And now I'll pass it on to Eric to take us through the future of open peer review. Thank you. Thank you, Devika. So that was a really great overview of what's coming immediately in OJS. And I'd like to both take a step back and a step even further forward to look at what the future of open peer review in OJS could look like. But before I do that, I'd like to take a quick look at what peer review in OJS 3.4 currently looks like. Could you go to the next slide, please? So this is a screenshot of the reviewer invitation page currently in OJS 3.4, where you are assigning a reviewer. And if you look at the bottom, that's what I'd like to focus on, the types of reviews that are currently possible in OJS. There are several options, but they all generally follow this fairly rigid workflow where a submission is submitted, it's either sent to review or declined, and then the reviews come in and the editorial board either accepts or declines or puts it back for review. So that's a fairly straightforward process of submission to review to accept or decline. And within the system, we have two flavors of peer review as I've been thinking of it. So we have the anonymous reviewer and anonymous author. This is a scenario where neither the author nor the reviewer know the identity of each other. Anonymous reviewer and disclosed author, where the reviewer knows the identity of the author, but not the other way around. And open, within the context of OJS, open here means that the identity of both the reviewer and the author are available to each other. But, all of this is still primarily mediated through the editors and the editorial interface. So in this context, even open reviews remain fairly restricted to part of the editorial workflow. And what 
I want to take a look at now, if we can go to the next slide, is what does the constellation of peer review possibilities actually look like? And at the PKP Sprint in Minneapolis earlier this year, a group of us got together and sat down to try and think of what this could look like. And the long and the short of it is there is a lot here to consider. We can go to the next slide. So one of the first things that we started to think about is identity and visibility. I have the wrong information here, so I will go ahead and read off what I actually meant to put here, apologies. So if under identity and visibility, we have either anonymous, so the identity is not known, private, the identity is known within the confines of a system, or public, where the identity is made available to the public at large. So for example, private, would be what OJS currently has as open, where the identities are somewhat visible to each other, but they are not available to the general public. We go to the next slide. Of course, I did swap those two, so <laughs> we'll just uh, think back. So the who we are talking about, are they the author, the reviewer, the editor or members of the public. And one complicating factor of this is that the author, reviewer, and editor are well-considered parties when we're thinking about peer review, but both public in the identity and the who's who add an extra element that really expands the idea of what open peer review can be and who can participate in review. And when we look at these, we really have already just 12 different possible combinations that we can put together that really explodes all the different types of reviews that are possible and that are currently in use. Can we go to the next slide? This also brings up the question of what about the visibility of reviewer reports once they are put together. So we've already set aside that there are 12 at least different combinations of who all can see what was written as in terms of identity. But what could be visible in terms of review reports? Is it just the review reports? Is it the author responses as well? Is it the editorial responses to these? And this all can happen on a per review round basis. There's also the question of when these things could be visible. Is it pre-publication? Is it post-publication? Is there a possibility for public or reader comments? So these are all of the factors that we were considering when looking at what all is involved with peer review, what all has been done, and is there anything out there that is possible but hasn't been done yet? We tried to find as many examples of this as possible, which brought us to the chart on the next slide which this is the most distilled version of what we were calling the constellation of peer review. I'll give a little background on what's going on on this chart before walking through it. So we have these square or rectangular boxes. Those are things that happen pre-publication. We have the circular or oval boxes, which are post-publication. And we have the diamond boxes, which are yes or no's. So I'll walk through some of this to give some of our thinking of what all can happen and thinking of this in the context of both more traditional peer review processes as well as open peer review. So it all has to start at some point with a submitted manuscript. And then that takes us to the question of whether or not this is reviewed pre-publication. If it's not reviewed pre-publication in the case of open peer review post-publication, or in the case of something like a preprint server, that's pretty straightforward. It goes straight to publication. But what about if it is reviewed pre-publication? We have to consider then the author reviewer visibility. And this brings into the decision of all of the different combinations of identity and people that I was talking about earlier. So the authors, the reviewers, the editors, the public, whether they're anonymous, whether it's private or whether it's public, all of that fits into this step here. 
then there's the question of is, are the materials shared with the author? What types of materials? Are the reviewer comments? Is the reviewer identity? All of these things factor into what goes into the type of peer reviews that are possible and how those systems work. Then comes the next decision. Does it move forward? Or are they asked to revise and submit to or submit to a new review round? If yes, then this process starts all over again with going back to the question of getting reviewers and author reviewer visibility. If not, that then takes us to publication. And publication really is kind of a nexus point here on this diagram because it's a singular point in time where everything that happens before it is pre-publication and everything that happens after it is post-publication. So when we go from publication, the moment of publication, we can enter a state of post-publication. But looking off to the side, we have to consider what is shared publicly from the pre-publication steps. If there are pre-publication steps, open peer review could mean that the reviews that have been completed pre-publication are now visible. Looking at post-publication, we can also consider other elements of reviews, such as public comments. These typically won't involve revision and resubmission because they're reader comments, but these can be elements of a peer review process, especially one that is very open. This also raises questions about what if the invited reviews happen post-publication? This essentially takes everything above from author reviewer visibility through revising and publication and inserts it at the bottom of this graph. This may involve changes and republication as well as new versions, re revision and submission. And this is the most succinct distillation of this graph that I was able to fit that would fit on a single slide, but this could very easily have many, many more arrows pointing around. So this is where the landscape of the constellation of peer review currently sits. We go to the next slide. Which takes us to, wow, that sure is a lot of questions that we need to consider when thinking about peer review. And we can't do it all, not in a single system, or at least it might be kind of foolish to try. So on the next slide, that takes us to, for open peer review in OJS, what do we need to think about if we want to make open peer review in OJS possible? Well, first we need to think about how we share review materials post-publication with the review process already complete. So for example, workflow editorial decisions for each submission, what review materials will be shared publicly from this review process? Will the publicly shared materials be anonymous or signed? As in, is the identity known? Also need to consider how invited and formal review occurs post-publication. In other words, when review has not occurred pre-publication. And in an OJS context, this will require significant restructuring of our workflow process, process and decision-making points around reviews. The status of articles and labeling. Also, how would post-publication commenting work? In other words, community reviews and discussion. This doesn't necessarily have to be intertwined with development of open peer review, but there is an opportunity to bring this all together. But you may notice this does still sound like a lot of work. And how would we even begin to tackle some of this? Well, on the next slide, that's where some of the exciting news that we have comes in. So the good news is that we are going to be tackling these questions. And thanks to OJS being chosen as the open source infrastructure for the Open Research Europe platform, we'll be adding open peer review for OJS 3.6. So what will this look like? So the short answer is it will look like the existing Open Research Europe platform implementation. And what this means for other users of OJS is that the peer review process will be much more flexible and allow for much more types of 
open peer review and a much more customizable peer review experience. So what does this mean concretely? So OJS 3.6 will support many things, but specific to peer review and open peer review, it will support publicly visible post-publication open peer review, public visible, publicly visible author comments, public comments from logged in users. And all of this is part of a continuous publication model where submissions are published, then considered to have peer review completed when they meet a specific threshold of accepted reviews. This is all a brief snapshot of what's to come in future versions of OJS, and there will be more details to come in the future. This has all fed from lots and lots of community discussion around open peer review, peer review, and what would benefit the OJS community. So I'm very excited to have been able to share a little bit about this today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much to our presenters. I'm going to jump back in here so I can um, facilitate a q and A. If folks have um, questions for our presenters, please feel free to send them in the chat or the Q&A in Zoom. Um, and I will point out too, while you're perhaps thinking of things to ask, um, that our colleague Vermeera from PKP Communications has dropped a link to the announcement um, around OJS and Open Research Europe, the ORE project that Eric mentioned. So we do have a question from Ina. Oh, we have two questions here. Okay, I'll start with Katie because that was first. Um, so this is regarding enabling editors and authors to manage their information themselves. This has advantages slash requirements, but we know some researchers see things like this as an administrative burden and would rather have it done by someone else. So how would you suggest um, they balance those two things? I can hop in and speak to this a little bit. Um, I'm not involved with this specifically, but one reason for an implementation like this is to bring OJS into greater compliance with GDPR. So one of the problems with the current system is that administrators are allowed to take actions on behalf of other users, which is very convenient, but kind of goes against the idea of an individual owning and having control over their own data. And so if you have the issue of it is convenient to have other people managing their, their processes within a system, I imagine being able to share credentials or have things set up on behalf of other people would be a possible workaround. Um, I'm not sure if there have, has been any other consideration on how best to approach this. I'll kind of leave that open. But that's kind of the thinking behind it is, yes, it is a bit of a burden, but Overall, it's a, well, one, better security practices to not let information like that openly available to an administrator, but also it makes it, brings it into more compliance with things like GDPR. Um, I'll add on to that. One other thing that we're trying to do in OJS, and I know a lot of people are familiar with this, is there's once a user is added on OJS, there's this button as login as, right, where you can log in as the user to like make some changes or like, you know, take onus. But uh, where we've also made that sophisticated is the fact that in history or any changes that an editor does or somebody does on behalf of the user, you can read the fact that, um, you know, this action was taken by this one on behalf of this one, and it's going to be in the history. So that way you can manage um, the burden more effectively while also being informed. Um, this plays in really nicely to our next question too from Ina, um, which is around the protection of personal information of reviewers um, being accommodated in, in 
OGS 3.5 and specifically mentioning GDPR and um, POPIA, um, other privacy protection requirements. So it seems like you've addressed that a little bit in um, the prior discussion. Do you have anything more to share? No, nothing more. But what I can do is um, I can like speak to my team and get more information about this and share it with um, Aina post this call as well. Sounds great. Thanks, Devika. Uh, let me see. So we have another question from Juliana. Um, will the new version of OJS feature improved reviewer reports? In particular, we're interested in having a useful um, way to track active slash engaged in review reviewers versus inactive, not currently handling reviews reviewers in order to avoid overloading reviewers with several tasks simultaneously. I'll take the question. So uh, currently we have not moved to the reports or the statistics of the reviewers for 3.5. We're just bringing in these changes, uh, but that is not gonna stop us from working in the future for it. Um, but yeah, thank you for uh, bringing to our attention um, the statistics that would be important uh, for handling review requests. So thank you. I'll also quickly jump in on that as well. Um, this, again, will be for future versions of OJS, not 3.5. But all of the improvements that are going into 3.5, both the ones we've mentioned here today and also the ones around submission management in general, will help allow for greater visibility into reviewer work and will lay groundwork for better things like reviewer reports in the future. So whereas that is not currently in the plan for 3.5, all the work that's going into 3.5 right now will help make that better in the future, as well as just providing better visibility into what's going on in general. Amazing. Um, could you um, also speak to if you if you have any information on this, just in case folks are curious, um, what what of these developments or these changes could we expect for um, OMP or OPS as well as this development? Um, uh, just for OJS, or can we expect some of these um, additions to be coming in, in the, the other platforms as well? So um, the dashboard is something I know the team is trying to work and bring into uh, OMP and OPS, but we're still under process and I really don't know if we'd be able for 3.5 to get the dashboard um, put in for uh, OMP and OPS, but that has been on our minds. And I know we've been, we've started our work towards it, but yeah, it's 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 a big cake to bite. Great, thanks Devika. Any other questions from our attendees? 